everyone. As promised, today we are going to be tackling the toucan and I thought it would be fun to do him in some more bright and nice um, interesting colours really. So there are a few bits I might do in black but the main parts aren't going to be in black. I'm going to use my um, polychromos because that's what I use for the background and I just happen to have them right next to me on my desk and I'm going to start with a bluish turquoise for some of these feathers and I shall show you. I'm just going to start by doing a dark turquoise colour here and at the bottom. Actually that's not, is that going to work? Because we want to do the top and bottom. Yeah, it will. You can actually cheat, go across like that for now. Don't worry that they're not defined as separate. We'll do that in a minute. And the bottom here. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to go really light with the cobalt. Cobalt green. And uh, do a little bit. We're going to go on top of what we've got there and spread it towards the centre of the feather and leave a little gap for shine. It's going to be quite bright and shiny. There we go. These pencils are nice on this paper. I haven't, um, I don't think I've used polychromos in this planner yet. So I'm just bringing them together and just trying to leave a little bit of white, not really too obvious, but just a bit of shine. Sort of fade it towards the centre, like that. And to define between the, um, the feathers, I'm going to use this dark indigo just underneath each of the feathers just to provide some shadow so you can see what's going on. I hope that makes sense. And the other side is going to be the same so I should just demo that because um, I need to see how it looks. So remember we just went over the top of that boundary. It's really cheating but uh, it seemed to work. Now these are similar colours to a picture I did earlier, um, no, end of last week from a different book. But I'm not sure whether everyone watches all of my videos or whether they just watch the Johanna Basford ones. So I thought I would do something similar again, I really liked it. Also a different brand of pencil, so different colour numbers and that sort of thing. And we're going to switch and change in a minute, I'm not going to do everything this colour. His wings, I think these are, are not going to be the same colour as his body. Oh, it's a train. Beep, beep. Okay, dark indigo again to define those feathers. Okay, and I'm going to put a dark indigo patch under here. I had wondered about doing that black, but I think the dark indigo will work here. And then we just got this last bit, and again, I'm going to use a similar um, method. Dark, fade it slightly, dark at the bottom, bring it up and fade. Same here, and fade, and bring that up and fade. And then back in with the cobalt green. It looks. I'm hoping this looks like the feathers got a bit of a shine because feathers are often a little bit oily and shiny. Now we're going to do the feathers on the chest. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick a couple of colours that I really like. Why not? Just sharply keeping you in suspense while you wonder what it is. This is the light red violet. Okay. And we're going to use this for 
the darkest colour. So we're going to do that where it's near the body and just fade it out. We're not going to do both edges like we did on the wings because there isn't so much space and we can define that shadow where they overlap as well a bit more easily. So I hope everyone's keeping well. Um, there are a lot of winter colds going around at the moment in the UK as well as the dreaded Covid of course. Um, our government, uh, well, last week um, reduced some of the restrictions but I'm still very wary. I don't want to um, spread Covid to anybody so uh, I still wear my mask when I go out and things like that. I want to keep people safe. Our government have been starting to say it should be treated like flu but I, it's actually, Covid has got me thinking about flu and how actually we shouldn't really even be spreading flu around, you know, or colds if we can help it. Now I'm lucky because I work from home, I don't have to go out, so if I'm poorly, I try and stay in and not spread it and it's just got me thinking about that a little bit more and that I should be a bit more thoughtful about that. But uh, obviously it's tricky for the husband and children. My husband has actually been told by his workplace that if you've got colds or flus, they don't want you trying to go in and uh, just be a martyr to it and work. They want you staying at home and not spreading it to everybody. So that's rather good. Um, but the children at college, it's a little bit different. Um, it's tricky with attendance. Government wants to enforce attendance as hard as possible and obviously kids who take long holidays in term time or who just don't go to school because they don't like it and that sort of thing their grades are going to suffer if you're poorly you know should you really be there and also are you spreading germs for other kids to catch which then might make them have to miss it's a really tricky situation um and i'm glad i'm not the one like magenta having to make the decision about what to do about it all but um, my kids insist on going in because they're told that that's what they have to do so I'm going over the top of the uh, light red violet and then just spreading that pink further down each feather I'm trying to leave a little tiny bit of a white gap but it's quite difficult because it's a small space but uh, yeah, the boys are in there. They've got this, the rest of this year up to the summer and then one more year. And then they'll be um, finished with their formal education, as it were. Um, so they can choose. Um, my one son at the moment wants to go to university. And there is one local-ish to us. It is a bit of a trek. Uh, if you go by um, public transport but I'm hoping he might be able to drive by then and um, he um, or he might want to move out of course and live nearer and um, he um, he wants to study AI um, artificial intelligence and computing his computing he's really enjoying studying at the moment um, his brother wants to be a helicopter pilot now Unfortunately, there's no paid course. Uh, there's no course for that. My um, the AI course my son can get a student loan. Um, helicopter pilot, no, no such thing. Um, so you have to save up, and it's very, very expensive. So he's sort of thinking maybe working at the airport in a different role. He might be able to get a discount on learning to fly. He just get his hand in there and learn a bit more about it all and then get his lessons as he saves up for them. So that's uh, an interesting idea. He will have some money when he turns 18. He's got a trust fund, but it's not anywhere near enough to uh, pay for lessons, especially if he moves out because the airport, again, is some distance away, not huge. So it'll be in the town where my parents live, actually. I had suggested to my husband we all move. You know, if, if he works in that town, 
and they're they're studying or working there as well but he loves where we live as do i so we really don't want to do that i am going to go a little bit mad i feel like i want to do a different color for the tummy it's going to be a very 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 colorful bird and i am thinking orange <laughs> But we've got an orange background, so maybe that isn't such a good idea. Let's do some green. Come on, let's just go bonkers and go mad. Um, I think I want to do, yeah, let's do this sort of shade of green. Let's do a hooker's green to start with. And how am I going to do it? I'm going to ignore this line and these bits. Those, I might colour over these bits and go over them in pen after because they're quite fine. So... I'm going to start off by doing a fairly um, heavy layer under here. I think I'm just going to go over that in a black pen. But I may do, I could do a, I might do a metallic one, I think. It depends what I've got hanging around. So it's rather nice that they sort of know what they want to do already. I had no idea at 16 what I wanted to do. I... Uh, I, while I was at school, I used to watch um, a TV show called Neighbours. Um, if you're Australian, you'll certainly have heard of it. But it was much more popular, I think, in the UK than it actually was in Australia. I'm going to do a heavy layer at the bottom and fade it up towards the centre as well before we introduce our next colour. Anyway, I used to watch Neighbours. And um, there was a character in it who was a secretary, um, Jane Mangle, her name was. Um, might be bringing back memories for some people. Other people I have no clue what I'm on about. Hang on, I'm going to pause the video. <laughs> Sorry, I had the most enormous sneeze. So <laughs> I just thought I'd better pause the video. I'm just going to fade this in both directions a little bit. Anyway, this character I Neighbours was a secretary and I thought that looked like a really cool job. So I decided I'd wanted to be that. So um, I told my um, careers advisor at school, light fallow green that um we're going to go over the top of um what we've done and then take that green towards the center um that i wanted to be a secretary and they said no goodness you can't only be a secretary i went to a um a grammar school they were very ambitious career wise for us so um they said you'll have to be a pa now there's quite a big difference between the two roles they're not alike at all and uh, but I didn't really know so that was what I was thinking of but uh, when I found out I did some work experience and uh, for an insurance company and I went to the secretarial department it was quite strange because I was this would have been in the 19 very early 1990s I think or late 80s early 90s and I'm going to just join that up leaving a lighter area and um, the secretaries at this insurance company were using electric typewriters now I expected secretaries to all use computers so I was a bit confused I was also really really shy and so I didn't speak to them much I didn't ask any questions I just did the work they told me to do and uh, it was all a bit scary to be honest and um, hmm. I'm going to take this green down into the tail, I think. Maybe I'm just going to do this first section and then I might do a blue and a pink just to bring those colours back in. We'll see. I'm just going to do this first section first. So we're going to do the darker green at the top just a little bit and at the bottom and then bring that lighter one back in. So... Um, and I went to other set. I went at, basically went to lots of different departments in the company. And as I said, I was really shy. I didn't talk much. A lot of some people just talked at me, which was really nice, and I didn't have to talk. And some people asked me questions, which I was polite enough to answer. But asking my own questions, I was just too shy. So when my report came back from my work experience, they said that they were really surprised. The secretarial section basically said they were really surprised I wasn't more enthusiastic than going back to the light fallow green because, um, you know, but I seemed really bored and disengaged. But of course, I was just really shy. And uh, I don't know 
I was more shy than other kids of my age, definitely. But I don't know why they didn't sort of expect children to be a bit shy not and a bit nervous about going into a company for the first time ever. But anyway, so uh, that's sort of... I was a bit disillusioned then with the whole secretary thing, as you can imagine. So uh, I... Um, decided to do business studies at college because it seemed I didn't want to get a job then because I was too frightened so I thought if I go to university it was a college but you did degrees it was all a bit I won't explain the flipping university system in the UK it's very complex but anyway um, so I wanted to so I stayed at my local um, college and did my degree and um, started off in business studies Mm. Pink or blue next? Blue. How many of you said pink? <laughs> right, so we're going back to the blue colours we used for this. So this is the um, bluish turquoise. I'm going to sharpen it there. Um, so I did business studies, but I picked up a few psychology modules. And we could pick and choose a little bit, which was rather fun. So I picked up a few psychology, something I was really interested in. And um, I really liked it. So I changed. I was doing business studies with financial services. And I always had the idea of changing that financial services to psychology. You weren't allowed to apply for that combination of subjects because it's just weird. But you could change to it once you started. So that was always my plan. So I changed. And then the psychology department was only small. So you could only do a minor in it because there weren't enough modules on offer. Once I'd done a year, the department grew in size and they offered psychology as a major. So I changed my major from business studies to psychology and made business studies my minor. So I, so I actually, my degree is in psychology with business studies. Odd, I know. But I had to repeat a year to get all the um, modules in. So I ended up doing four years, which I really enjoyed, actually. The psychology was great fun. It was not what I expected. and. It used to drive me bonkers because people would, when I went to, um, whenever I told people what I was studying, they would go, oh, you're not analysing me, are you? And I said, well, that isn't what psychologists actually do. Um, that's a psychiatrist probably more so. Um, so I've now swapped to the cobalt green. Um, so no, <laughs> that wasn't what I was doing, learning about really, but it was really interesting, something I'd never done before, we didn't do it at school, it was great fun, and so when I left, I was like, now what am I going to do? So, um, I tried to find a job in the field of psychology, um, but in the meantime, I got a temp job in an office, um, because I knew I had to, get, my parents were like, you're getting a job, madam. <laughs> You've been living at home for so long, you know, so, okay. So I just, I wasn't, I got so much more confident in university. We had to do lots of presentations and things like that. And after my first presentation, I just, my confidence soared. I just, it was just fantastic. And I couldn't stop talking then. That's where I got my talking ability or, I don't know too much talking anyway um now we're going to do the pink so um i yeah uh, i the light red violet so i looked for jobs and everything said you need a um my degree hadn't been approved by the british psychological society because they it was new and the library wasn't very big so they said to me basically if you want to get a job in psychology you'll need to ha get a master's degree from a university that we recommend that will allow your degree to sort of bring up your knowledge so you know so it needs to be a taught master's degree and here is the list of places you can go so I had a look and I made a very brave decision to go to Glasgow in Scotland to do my um, masters. Now I lived in Gloucestershire. The furthest north I'd ever been was York. So anybody who um, is from the UK will know that I haven't been very far. And uh, I can hear a van outside. Hmm? Anyway, and uh, so I hadn't been very far. 
so it's a huge but I just decided if I was going to move out of home I was just going to go far away so that I couldn't keep coming back home I would just have to cope and uh, so I went up to Glasgow to do a master's degree it was great fun I uh, it, it taught me so much which was great not just the course itself um, which was good I enjoyed it but it was in research methods, so it taught me how to do different types of research, which was good fun. And we used to practice the techniques and things like that. But about living with people that aren't your family, wow, you know, it, it was so different. I lived with two girls, they were lovely. But, um, you know, I had to learn a lot about keep cleaning up after myself, um, sharing um, things, sharing a kitchen and a bathroom, that sort of thing and living in a completely new country which obviously is quite different too hmm I'm thinking about what to do next I'm gonna get my dark indigo and I'm gonna do these um, these bits with just a really hard layer and then that will help to tell me what to do next so yeah and then after I got my qualification I passed the course I wrote to the British Psychological Society and said, I've done this master's, can you now approve my degree? No. So I went through that year, which was great, and the cost, I had to pay for it, because uh, there was no um, and everything, but you know, I'd saved because I'd worked for a year already, but uh, and they didn't approve it. But, so it meant that I could still couldn't get a job in that field, which was a bit irritating. But what I did was I got another job in another office, um, um, this time for a building society, which is a bit like a bank. And um, I, I uh, did some part-time lecturing at the local university, that the one I'd been to um, for my first degree. Um, I think I'm going to do this bit here as well, like this, instead of doing black, I think this colour will work. And I haven't really thought about the beak and the face. I think the face I, I can do in these colours, but the beak, I'm not sure. And I think I'm going to try doing these in this colour, I think it will cover over the green, okay? So, but while I was um, doing this lecturing, teaching, I taught GCSE psychology, which I'd never taken. And I did some degree level stuff as well at the two different um, institutions. Um, while I was in the middle of doing the GCSE teaching, I met my husband, or well, now husband, and uh, I moved away, moved in with him, because he lived in a very different part of, he lived near London ish nearish to london right we're going to move on with the bird this part here i'm going to do in blue obviously that's what i've got in my hand so this is back to the bluish turquoise and we're going to do a dark layer here i still don't know what i'm doing for the beak i don't know whether to do it black i'd like to do it sort of yellow but that's the background very colourful isn't he? It's not quite how I planned him. But as I said in a previous video just a while ago I can't visualise so I can't plan properly so I just have to wing it. Cobalt green. I'm going to try and leave a little bit of white right in the middle so I'm going over quite hard over the edges and then fading it a bit towards the white area that I have left and I'm going to just leave a few bits of white. Yeah. And then we'll go for green in our next section here. So very similar. Dark under here. It's really the same thing, except with green instead of blue. I'm trying to get quite a hard layer. 
and then this as we go like that and then go in with the light phthalo green and just go over the top This is nearly lunchtime. Mm, I'm feeling a little hungry. It wasn't earlier. I am now. There we go. Now this big section I'm going to do in the pinks. Um, how should we do it? I think we'll do it so it's dark all the way around the edge. So I'm doing quite a solid layer around there and then I'm going to fade it a bit ready for the lighter pink to come in and do its work. There we go. And again this is the um, light magenta. I'm trying to think what colour I'm going to do the flowers and things because do we want the bird to stand out more than the flowers? Do we want the flowers to tie in with the bird colours? Do we want them to look completely different? I do not know the answer to my own question. I'm just going to get my brush. Ooh, I'm just going to hit my brush on the tripod. I'm really sorry if that made you jump. go over that and see what happens. I want to leave quite a shine there. I think that looks quite nice. Now this bit here we have these lines. I'm going to do that in indigo in a minute. So I've got to fill in these little sections. And I think hmm Yes, I am going to do the whole of this area, including those sections in the blue. So we've got our bluish turquoise again. And we're going to do it a bit like this. So all the way around here. And down. As if this is one big section. Like that. And so I'm just going to sort of fade it a bit. As we go up, don't worry too much about going over the lines because we are doing a shade of blue after all. Just fade it down a bit. Now those, um, these circles and this line and all this will all be in the indigo in a minute. I'm just going to go over all of this, sorry, in the cobalt green. This makes up for yesterday's video, it's a bit short I think, today's is going to be mammoth. I know some of you prefer a longer ones, some of you don't have time to watch a longer one. So uh, I try to, I do what I do, you know. So here we want to fade this um, down a little bit. So I've got a lighter area in there. I'm just going to tidy it up, it's a little bit scruffy. Just going around and over a little bit. And then we'll bring in the... Um, indigo and actually the center of the eye I want black I'm going to leave that for a minute I'm just going to do all the indigo bits this is the dark indigo I'm getting a bit hoarse I need a cup of tea I think I've got a drink of water somewhere there we go and all the 
Espera. Now I have got to think about what to do with this whole bit that goes over here. And I was thinking about doing that in indigo, but I think it... Um, I think it might look good in green. Let's go for our green. Let's, this is the deep... No, this is the hooker's green. Sorry. So, again, darker at the bottom. I think what we'll do is we'll make it quite light as we go up here. And the same here. So dark here. And lighter as we go up like that. A little bit different. And back to, whoops, the light thalo green all over. Nice, lots of layers here. And then reduce as we go up. It looks like it's got green hair now. Now in these ones we've left a little bit of white. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just do a really light layer all the way across the top. a bit thicker and darker down here. And just lighter here. There we go. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of pink in there. So I'm going to grab the um, light red violet and just pop it in there and then reduce it. And the same here. And then grab the light magenta and go over the top. And then just gently bring them in to leave that slightly white shine. Now we're approaching the beak. This piece here I am going to do in the dark indigo. So I didn't show you to start with. And I'm thinking I might just do a black beak just because I don't want to introduce a new colour. I think we've got an awful lot going on. I'm sure you agree. Um, just thinking about this line here, which I think I am going to go use this colour to dark indigo. Hmm. See, this would really carry on there. I think we'll just follow Johanna's lines on the end there. Use the dark indigo. Probably should have erased where I did the background wrong. But anyway, we'll leave that there. Now we can get a black. There we go. There's our black. I'm going to do the eyeball. Now we've got a, a circle in the middle where there's some reflection. So I'm going to leave that white. If you accidentally colour over that or it isn't white enough for you, you can use a bit of white gel pen. And I'm going to do the beak. Now I'm not, oh, I'm going to do this bit here, which is like the sort of nostril bit in this black as well. There we go. Now, I don't want the beak to all be completely solid black. I think it would be a lot darker down here. So I'm going to press quite hard as I do this lower bit. And I'm going to fade that up a bit towards that part there where it that's where it opens and closes really isn't it don't be afraid of letting some of the paper show through here you could blend it in with a gray or something if you wanted to show that lighter shade without leaving paper but i think that looks fine and i'm just going to do this end bit in the same way so darker there more layers more intense and then less to 
towards the top like that okay and the top bit the same we have got this slice which I think will leave completely white like a shine I'm going to ignore that little bit there because I'm just not sure what to do with it so I'm going to go lighter as we go up I'll just do this really light bit at the top you see I'm holding my pencil on the side so I get a nice even light coverage of colour and then as I want it darker, I try and find a sharper edge to get more intensity on the page. I want that quite dark down at the bottom really, because a beak would normally be quite um, shiny but intensely coloured, I'm thinking. Now it's a good idea to leave black till last because it can smudge. Um, polychromos are quite good for not smudging, but still, it is always a sensible approach. So there we go, and we have got the feet. I'm going to do them in black as well. And I'm going to use the same approach where I do them a little darker underneath and fade as we go up. simple so I've run out of words getting tired getting hungry actually so there we go with that one now what I am going to do is I'm actually going to come back tomorrow with a video showing you some of the flowers and leaves I'm sure I won't do them all on camera because you know we've got these two are the same and these three are the same so I'll just show you some bits and pieces of it maybe the um, branch maybe the um, outline I haven't thought about what to do for that yet and uh, I'll show you a few bits and then um, then we can sort of finish it off really I think it'd be fun just to have a third day on this particular project so I hope um, you like him I'm not sure if I do <laughs> to be honest he's yeah I don't know he's a bit monkers isn't he but he's fun and he's different and hopefully it's given you a few different ideas so and he certainly sort of stands out from the background which was all part of the idea so that's him so thank you so much for watching do have a lovely lovely day and happy coloring <laughs>